They say adversity builds character, but is it worth the adversity? Uh, we'll find out on Film Threat Reviews. Hi, I'm Alan Ning. I was Zorana Kid, and today we review Blast Beat. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, so help support Film Threat and our and our efforts to support independent film. Uh, when a family leaves their native Colombia for the United States in the summer of 1999, a metalhead science prodigy and his aimless younger brother struggle to align with the American dream and their new reality. Uh, directed by Esteban Arango, uh, stars Moises Arias, uh, Mateo Arias, Daniel Day Kim, Diane Guerra, Wilmer Valderrama. Uh, it's weird now to see Wilmer Valderrama as a father uh, in <laughs> movies, but here he is. He's a father. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting movie. What did what did you think of Blast Beat? Well, before we talk about the movie, I I really think we have to talk about the Arias brothers here, Moises and uh, Mateo. I don't know how much history you have about these two brothers. I know one's but, a Disney Channel kid. Well, here's the thing: like my kids were little at the height of the fame of of these two actors. Both were on the Disney Channel. Uh, Moises Arias played little Rico on Hannah Montana, which is like embedded in my brain. And his brother was on a Disney show called uh, Kickin' It. Um, so both of them grew up in that and, and the struggle for a lot of those kids is how to you know break out of that image and all this stuff. And last year I saw, well, first of all, I saw Moises in this other movie called Three Kings. I, I think that was the title, which he was very good in. But last year I was stunned, stunned at his performance in a movie called Monos. It was a very kind of, um, but these kids who uh, with guns uh, living in the jungle, and they kidnapping people. It was uh, it was amazing, and he was so good. This rebel type of kid in it. So he's clearly is you know has a, a a very clear career path that's that's really going from one end of the spectrum and really just trying to. I think he's really making a concerted effort to age himself into this whole other realm of, of, of acting. And he's really, really yeah. good. I mean, I don't even I, think I, about Rico and Hannah Montana anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, the, the, that's the thing. It's it's trying to break that Disney, um, that Disney stigma, so to speak. And, and you either go in one of two directions. And in the case of Moises here and Mateo, they chose the right direction. They, yeah. um, they, they, uh, they, they they built themselves as actors and I guess branding and business people uh, in the world of Hollywood and acting and have chosen the right roles that that don't push them into. Uh, they went gritty. They went gritty instead of yeah. you know, clean cut uh, uh, Disney. They totally mm -hmm. went through this gritty. And this film is definitely a showcase for the brothers. And and you know all all the other characters here essentially are very much secondary. They're not as that they're not that well developed. I mean, they're not, it's not that they're poorly acted, but they're not developed in uh, it, uh, as much. The focus is clearly on our two brothers. Yeah, let me let me just say that um, I was just thinking about that today, where. This movie is about these two brothers and all the supporting characters truly feel like supporting characters. Uh, they're not, they are not well-developed or they don't develop well in the sense of, you know, they're, they're there to support the journey of these two, two yeah. brothers. And it's great. Uh, you know, I, I was waiting for Daniel Day Kim to ultimately show up and it was just like, oh, okay, this is the way this movie falls together. The story it tells and the way it tells the story particularly with its uh, supporting characters is just brilliant. Yeah, you were waiting for Daniel De Kim to show up. You know, he he was one of, you know, there were some stereotypical things about him um, that I I was a little disappointed in because at, um, at one point um, he kind of disciplines uh, the older brother for, you know, having misled to being in his classroom or something and gives him a harsh boot and a harsh exit. That, which I thought was um, very sort of, um, that's the kind of stuff you see in sitcoms. Like you, there's a big dramatic incident that occurs and then that's the end. And I sort of felt that that was um, a little stereotypical, but I just, 
we should probably cancel what I just said because we haven't even talked about the plot line and all yeah. of that. Well, and, I, and, and he does explain it. And then also the fact that he is a supporting character and, and yeah. this is the story. It, yeah. it does serve it does serve their character arc. Okay, so the story basically, interestingly enough, this was a short film uh, a couple of years back that the brothers were in and playing brothers. And um, it was expanded into a feature film. Um, and it is an interesting take on the immigration story. First of all, it is set in Colombia and uh, before they come to America. And uh, it's the, the loose sort of veiled plot line here of them having to leave is that something to do with political assignment. Uh, 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 the loose plot line is, is something to do with like seeking political asylum, some type of extortion that's happening, and that's why they have to leave. And then it's basically never <laughs> revisited again. So we don't really, that's kind of dropped. Um, but uh, it to see the, these this family move to a place where they, you know, don't have they don't know it. They're the one boy is very ambitious, the other boy is kind of troubled in how being in a different environment kind of amplifies both of those things in each one. And you just see it all play out. And I thought that was a really interesting take on the uh, the uh, immigration tale that is often, you know, there's a more typical storylines mm -hmm. that we've seen in the past. Yeah, I mean, I did appreciate that. And, and, um, and the, that's where I kind of, uh, at the beginning, when we talk about adversity building character, it, it's these kids are are set on two different paths. The the older Mateo, uh, or the older brother who Mateo plays, um, you know, he's on he's a science prodigy. He's he wants to join NASA, and uh, and he's getting derailed. And and a lot of the derailment occurs from his brother, who's kind of a screw up, who uh, is always getting into trouble. He he got his best friend thrown into basically recruited into Colombian military. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, and so they both have these lessons to learn. Uh, you know, you know, things are not going to go easy for these kids and they don't. And, and um, it almost always seems hopeless. And, and it is, you know, and it is these times of adversity that builds their character, that shapes these two young boys into the men that they will eventually become. And uh, to me, that was the most fascinating part. And that's why yeah. I'm I'm so in on their story and yeah. willing to forgive a lot of the shortcomings maybe of the supporting yeah. and because some, that's, that's, what, that's what they are. They're supporting the story. Yeah. Because some of the shortcomings, you know, for example, the, uh, the, the school bully is the whitest kid you'll ever <laughs> see in the- Well, yeah, I mean- <laughs> In the flashiest sports car, you know, it's like it's like a John Hughes movie. It's, it's the definition of privilege. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and so it was just like, okay, we know what this guy's about, and and uh, you know the 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 casting of his parents, played by Wilmer Valderrama and um, Diane, uh, Guerrera. Diane Guerrera. Um, first of all, these two look like they walked out of the pages of a fashion magazine. <laughs> And um, they don't look like they are older than the children that they've supposedly birthed in this movie. <laughs> they all look like they could be siblings of four, honestly, um, uh, because they, they just don't look like they're old enough to even uh, have uh, uh, the Arius brothers. Uh, so that, mm. that seemed a little, a little bit far-fetched. And <laughs> in the short, the mother in the short is much more age appropriate <laughs> but i guess once you start expanding things into a feature you start to have to think about financiers and star power and all of a sudden you decide on these two however they are legit colombians like uh, wilmer uh, 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 uh valderrama is um I, I believe i believe he is half colombian and half venezuelan and diane guerrera is colombian and in fact 
uh, you know, her backstory that she has written books about is that her parents were deported and her brother uh, when she was 14. And she was uh, at 14, she was living with other family members because her parents were deported. So so the the, the actors that he in this movie are are maybe US born, but but they they are rooted. Uh, they have Colombian roots, mm -hmm. and um, and so it lends a authenticity to this movie, and I and I find that that that's often so important. And um, uh, you know, I mean, I'm Ukrainian, yeah. and if they had someone Russian playing a Ukrainian, I would find that upsetting. Yeah, so and I, I'm sure it is for you the same thing. So I I appreciated that the. The actors were le legit Colombian rooted. Yeah, I mean, I do, I do like the direction the the movie went in in terms of telling that story because, you know, it it doesn't feel like a Disney Channel movie. It doesn't feel like a Nickelodeon movie or or even a gritty Disney Channel or Nickelodeon movie. It's it's a very gritty movie, and and mm -hmm. I also like the choices they made with the characters. You know, yeah, the screw up kid on the skateboard. We've seen that, but mm -hmm. but for uh, Mateo's character, who is a uh, not only a science prodigy, but a, a major metal head. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, way into thrash metal. He, you know, he's got the long hair and the the black leather jacket, and I just appreciate the the choices they make because, you know, I I guess a, a scientist could be into thrash metal, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, or as his mother calls it, satanic music. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, we, don't know, we don't know what Elon Musk is into. He could be into <laughs> metal music too. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's just it's just such a fascinating story. And uh, it's it does never feels upbeat or happy like a Disney Channel movie, but it does feel inspiring and hopeful. And and ultimately, that's why I like this movie. But uh, so many times I kept looking at uh, the older Arius brother going, he doesn't look like he's a high school senior like that. <laughs> that was the other thing, like. When we see him auditing this class in college, I mean, he even looked older than some of the college. <laughs> so, so yeah. but, but I was totally willing to suspend disbelief because the two brothers are really, they're, they are dynamic. And, and whether they continue to be a dynamic duo in creating projects together or they continue, they go, you know, their separate ways and, and, and Moises does something like Monos that he did last year or the previous year. I mean, or Hannah Montana three. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You know. That, that, that <laughs> I know. You pay him enough money, and uh, you know. Money you know. from that can finance his next gritty feature. You know, you never know. That'd be worth the trade off. Um. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm guessing you you really love this movie. Um. You 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 appreciated the the acting definitely from the Moises, uh, the Arius brothers. Um. Yeah, you know, I've given up on age appropriateness in, in Hollywood <laughs> long ago. So uh, I think you liked enough to give it an eight. Yes, that is correct. I, I did precisely for, for, for those reasons. It's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Uh, the, it's a different tale on immigration because they're, you know, they're relatively wealthy coming into this country uh, as opposed to, uh, and with their education, they have an, uh, they are adept at the English language. So they're not coming into this country, you know, coming from poverty and not knowing the language, which obviously helps the plot line and I'm sure was a factor in, in doing that. But uh, this movie has a lot going for it. Um, I, I think you enjoyed it also uh, uh, as much as I did. Uh, I think you were also impressed by the same things. Um, some of those little things that mattered to me <laughs> didn't matter to you so much. You were able to spend suspend disbelief much more than I was able to. But I still think you gave it an eight as well. I mean, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I gave it an eight. And yeah, you know, what are we going to do about it? I, <laughs> you know, you got to cast, you got to cast. And, you know, it's got to make money, so you got to put a name in it. And, you know, and I can't, you know, you're just not going to have fun with movies if you're going to get hung up about that throughout the entire <laughs> film. So so good job. Um, I, I, let, I let it go. So there you go. Um, so, hey, uh, let us know what you thought of Blast Beat. Uh, it's on VOD. You can watch it now. Uh, and uh, let us know. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you thought. And with that, let's get out of here.